Welcome to another badass video from Network Engineer Academy. Now, this topic is all about the 21 things to know about the switch. 21 things that you better know about switches. Now, if this topic is new to you, what I'm gonna ask you to do is for you to go through this video, not once, but twice. And obviously, make sure you take notes. Now, if this topic is not new to you because you've been in the IT for a few months, years, or maybe you've been working on Cisco switches, now let's go through this exercise. Let's go through this process. What about if I come up to you, like right now, and try to engage with me? And I ask you, can you tell me 21 things about switches? Go, like go. Will you be able to do that? You know, I went through that process myself and I was able to come up with 11 and I'm like, you know, I need more than 11 things. So it took like 25 minutes, you know, for me to come up with the 21 things. And that's the reason why sometimes that we think that we know a lot, that we know better, but sometimes it's for you to be present and be like, okay, how can I go through this video? And yes, probably I may know a lot of what Jorge is gonna say, but maybe it's one, two, three things that I may not know. That will be good to know. One, second, the way that I will walk you through the 21 things, the way that I'm gonna approach the 21 things about switches. Because I know you will be able to learn a lot on how to communicate what you know, and how to connected with other topics related to switches, to the 21 things that I'm gonna walk you through. This is powerful. This is how I'm able to accelerate the process of learning technical topics. So, go through the video, and this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. Take two minutes, like right now, take two minutes and pause the video, and you know, get a, a, a notepad and just go. Like, let's see if you are able to come up with 21 things about switches. And compare, you know, the things that you came up with and the things that I was able to come up with. And I know there are probably more than 21 things, but obviously I don't wanna make this video too long and I just wanna focus based on how would I answer that question if someone asked me. So let's get right into it, okay? The first thing that uh, went through my mind was, well, you know, when you take the switch out of the box, it works. That's it, you know, when you take a switch out of the box, it works. So let's say that a manager come up to me and ask, you know, Jorge, um, I need to know how much you know about switches, you know, because we need someone obviously that will be able to uh, configure and troubleshoot uh, switches. So I wanna know how much you know. That way I will know if I will give you the job. So can you come up with five, seven things? One of the first things is, well, you take the switch out of the box and it works. Now, I can stop myself right there and move to the second one. But you see, how can I make that more interesting? How can I make it in a way that I can connect with the manager, right? So he can see me that I know, just, I know more than just switches. So this is something that I will say related to number one. Well, let me tell you, like when you take a switch out of the box, it works. So you have, let's say, those five computers and you want those computers to communicate with each other. Well, you're gonna plug them in on the switch using a twisted pair cable. And guess what? They're gonna work, they're gonna, they will be able to communicate. Obviously, if those computers have all that TCP IP settings, you know, the IP address, the subnet mask, no need for gateway because we're still working on the local area network. But yes, you know, you take the switch out of the box and it works. Not like routers, by the way. You know, you take the router out of the box and it doesn't do anything. Now you have to console in, connect to it, and configure the router in order for the router to work. So you see like the big difference and how I was able to just say, oh, you know, switches work out of the box. And by the way, these are switches, okay? So let's go to number two connects and allows end devices to communicate with each other. So that's something that I said previously, right? So a switch allows end devices, now, 
What's end devices? Well, that can be computers, that can be printers, that can be servers, like any end device, right? To communicate with each other. As long as say they, they have, you know, that TCP IP settings. And obviously, you know, switches, there's something that I'll probably come up in the next few slides. It's all about IP addresses, right? And you're probably wrong, Jorge. It's MAC addresses, come on. So yes, that's MAC addresses, no IP addresses, right? So again, right? So number two connects and allows end devices to communicate with each other. Now this is something for you to think about and be like, okay, that makes sense, but how can I make it my own? How can I add a few other things that are related to this topic? That way it can make a lot more sense to me and obviously for me to be able to recall this information when I need it. Bam! You see, that's how pitching technical info uh, should be. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. So three, can be managed or unmanaged. Okay, I don't know what that means. Well, that's one of the things that come through my mind. And that was because, you know, I was looking at that router that I have and I have like a small, you know, switch. Not a Cisco switch, just a small switch. Now, manage or unmanaged, obviously what that means is that you can go to Best Buy, you know, and get those uh, switches that will cost you probably $40, $60, $80. And you just basically take, take the switch out of the box, right? You plug in the computers that you want uh, to, uh, for them in order to communicate with each other. And that's it. You're not going to connect to the switch to configure that switch. Now, manage are basically when you manage like Cisco switches, right? And obviously that's other brands out there. But let me focus on Cisco. Now, that's when you... No, when you go through the CCNA, or even when you go through your CCNT, uh, you are able to uh, learn on how to configure, you know, uh, Cisco switches. And that's, again, you know, manage. But you see, that's another thing for you to think about. And probably you're like, you know, Jorge, I, I, I didn't come up with that, but I knew that. So this is why this is so huge for you to go through the videos that I'm posting because I really need you to use everything that you know. You know, many people out there in the IT community, they're really smart. Like they really are. They know a lot. They've been in the IT for many years. They've been working on a lot of projects. But when it really comes down to fix an issue a lot of the times or when they're about to go to on doing a project and I know this because I get this from many project managers you know because I ask as you know many questions uh, that they're unable to ask the right questions or they cannot you know uh, communicate what they know in a way that they can understand you know the other people like the vendor maybe the vendor it's not that technical you know maybe the other project manager it's not that technical and it's really difficult for IT engineers for them to do that you know and the way that you go through this process doing going through this video I'm teaching you how to access information that you know already in, and how to connect it with something that's related to that question that probably someone is asking you or related to the project that you're gonna work on or related to that issue that you are working on, that you are working on fixing. This is why it's so fucking huge to go through these videos. Not once, but twice, okay? So again, can be managed or unmanaged. So now, and managed switches, the right? So are the Cisco switches. So now number four, have an operating system. Well, that's obviously if they're managed switches, right? Now, this is something good to come up with, right? Well, they have an operating system. And now, let me ask you, right? Like, what's the, uh, the, the operating system is the iOS. iOS stands for Interconnected Operating System, I think. But you don't need to know that. No one is going to ask you, oh, can you tell me what iOS stands for? They're not going to ask you that. So don't focus on memorizing something that's not going to help you but a good thing for you to know is the versions like right now right this probably makes sense yeah you know like when i do uh because i've been working in the it you know jorge like when i do some switching labs um yeah you know like uh i know they have an operating system i know it's called ios okay will you be able to tell me some of the versions out there you see, if you're not able to tell me that, so how do I know if you really know? What you're telling me that you know. Like those little things makes a difference for someone 
in order for someone to see you like, wow, you know, you are an expert, like, wow. Instead of like, oh my God, this is another guy that just went through a book, memorized a few things and completely like useless. So now I'm asking you, what are some of the uh, versions out there? You know, we have 12.1, 12.3, 12.5, we have all the way to 15, you know, 15.1, 15.5, I think it's the one for some of the uh, devices out there right now. Uh, but you see that's something that you need to know and obviously there are uh, various uh, versions depending on what the features do you have on that device and the network device. But again, that's good to know. Like, yes, you know, like I've been doing some uh, lab, uh, switching lab configuration based on the 12.1 or based on the 12.3. Or you know I just got these routers out of eBay or switches out of eBay and they already have the 15.5. Uh, and that's something that I've been working on right now and doing this and doing that, bam, 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 bam. You see, it's a completely different way and approach on how you communicate what you know and what you are learning. So number five, we still have a lot to go through. Have uh, different models. Now, again, right, what type of models? And this is, I do remember this. You know, uh, when I go back and when I went through the job interviews, I know that at one of my previous jobs, one of the guys asked me, you know, we were talking about the things that I knew how to do on switches, and he told me, can you tell me some of, some of the models that, uh, of switches that you have worked with? And I was like, uh, you know, that's a good question. I mean, I know that iOS and this and that. I couldn't answer that question. Why? Because I didn't know any better. That was like many years back. That can happen to you. That will tell a lot on how much you really know. Because you see, they don't really care that much about they're asking you a technical question and for you to be able to answer a technical answer. They want to see like the big picture and how much you know. And how will you, and how will you be able to basically approach an issue, you know, working on a project, you know, dealing with users. That's exactly what they're looking for. How will you approach that? You know, and that's the reason why they ask you this type of question. So now I'm asking you right now, you know, if you are one of those guys that are like, you know, Jorge, like I'm still gonna go through your video, but I know that I know those 21 things, okay. Tell me some of the models. Tell me some of the models. You know, we have the 2960, we have the 3550, we have the 3560, we have the 3750s, you know, we have the 4500s, we have the 6500s, you know, and that's something that you learn through your CCNA routing and switching, through your CCMP routing and switching. Now, that's, um, oh, and that's basically for, um, and based on, um, within the company. Now we have the ones that we have on the data center, right? And those are like the new generation, generation of switches. Very, very expensive. That Nexus switches. Now, let me ask you, do you know some of the models of the Nexus switches? Because by the way, if you don't have experience, you know, they're kind of the same commands, but they are not the same commands. And both switches are from Cisco. And again, the Nexus switches, that's basically something that you will find on the data center, okay? So again, do you know some of the models of Nexus switches? You know, I have worked with uh, the 2000, the 5000, and once the 7000. So I know there's a thousand SB, I think, or B, I don't know, I never work with those, but I know that's a Nexus, a thousand, two thousand, three, four, three, four, five, seven, you know, uh, and nine thousand. I think it goes from seven to nine thousand, you know, and those obviously cost probably millions, you know, the, the seven and uh, nine thousand. Obviously, depending on what type of a service and everything that you are getting, you know, but I can go that, those are like that expensive, okay? But that's when you want to see, uh, follow that data center uh, pad, okay? Uh, but, but yeah, you see, we have the 2960s, 3550s, 3560s, 3750s, 4500s, 6500s. Now, what's the big difference? This is another question that they asked, you know? And that was at my previous position, and I knew better back then, so I was able to answer all of the questions. Really badass. 
But they asked me this question, Jorge, what's the difference between a 30, a 3550 and a 6, a 3550 switch with a 3750 switch? What's the difference between those two switches? Would you be able to answer that question? What's the main difference? Why would I get a 3550 that obviously will cost me less instead of 30, uh, a 3750 that obviously will cost me more? Why? I mean, you know switching. That's probably what you thought when you were going through this video. So tell me. You see, these questions are exactly what's probably holding you back for you to get the next job or for you to get that promotion. Because you focus too much on the technical aspect of it based on a book. And that's not gonna help you. Not because you have your CCNA, not because you have your network class, or all this BS that means that you know a lot, yet you may have an idea, but if you don't know how to use what you are learning and be able to apply it, guess what? You're just gonna be another average IT engineer. You're not gonna be one of the top. Why? Because that way that you approach that way that you learn things. So based on that, I'm like, okay, let me show you based on the lab that I have home. So I took some of the switches so that you can see the difference and that I can tell you about it, okay? So here we have uh, a 3750. So this is a 3750, okay? 3750 switch, okay? And it's not that heavy. The other one that I'm gonna show you is heavier. Now, what's the big difference between these two? This, okay? I can you can probably see this on camera. Now, that basically is when you are able to stack switches on top of each other. And you can go up to, if I'm not mistaken, up to nine switches. You know, what that means, you can set up like nine switches, stack them in the back, not with the either, uh, twisted per cable in front, no, like those really thick cables in the back uh, in a way that you can manage those nine or seven or five switches as one switch. So you basically assign in one IP address and that's five switches and you just manage those switches as one. And obviously if one switch goes down, guess what? You still have everything up and running, okay? With the other computers or devices connected. Now this one is heavier and this is a 3550 and you could probably see like, well, it kind of looks the same. Well, it kind of looks the same, but it's not the same. Why? Because if I go in the back, Right, you don't see those two ports right here the, for stacking. So that's a big difference. So now the, uh, if you knew, that, that's great. But if you didn't know, well now you know, right? The big difference. And this is something that you can probably ask one of your friends. It's kind of going through the, uh, the same process. Hey, by the way, do you know the difference between a 3750 and a 3550 switch? And let's see, that's the main. Yeah, they can probably a few other things, but the main, and more likely what they're looking for when if they ask you that question is that stacking, okay? So now you know. So uh, switches, this is probably uh, one of the first things that came up in your mind, you know, uh, it works on the layer two of the OSI model, the data link layer. So we have seven layers of the OSI model. Obviously, uh, switches work on the layer two of the OSI model. And yes, we have other type of switches. They're called layer three switches, but that's for another video. But right now, layer two switches, uh, and they work on the layer two of the OSM model. And by the way, because I know probably some of you will be like, you know, Jorge, you must stop. Why? Because you just show me two switches. They are layer three switches, you know, because of the model 3750s. Uh, come on, let's get to that point. We're talking about switches, okay? So switches, layer two switches work on the layer two of the OSM model, and yes, if you want me to be like so precisely, those switches that I just show you, the 3750 and the 3750, yes, they work on the layer three of the OSI model. We're just talking about the general, you know, because I know some people out there just looking for something to find. You know, I wanna see you doing a video. I wanna see you doing a fucking video. And let's see how well you do. Ah, uh, come on. You know, instead of putting all that, you know, people take the time, not just me, that's also other people, I mean, they take the time to give you some value for you to start like putting like, no, I was about to say something bad, but I'm like, be quiet. So anyway, so let's move on because we're still at number six. Okay. So data link layer of the OSM model. Now, obviously layer, uh, uh, switches are read physical addresses, Mac addresses. Okay. So you know that. So again, what's a Mac address, right? So it's a physical address. What that means, it doesn't change. And the end device. 
And that's probably something that you already went through and some of the 33 free videos. Now, if you haven't accessed the 33 free videos at no cost to you, that should be a link on top or on the bottom uh, underneath this video. 33 videos and I talk about MAC addresses and I go and I approach that topic really different than most people. Again, how can you really see it in a way that can you apply it? You know, related to other topics, so you can be a badass and the way that you communicate for you to recall that information and all the other good things. So again, a MAC address equals to a physical address, and that's exactly what switches uh, read. Not IP addresses, MAC addresses. Now we have what we call we have a CAM table, a MAC address table. Some people call. But again, if I want to be so like technical about it, it's called a CAM table. If I'm not mistaken, and this is not something that you have to know because no one is going to ask you, you know, and it's not going to help you for you to get a better job. But if I'm not mistaken, it's content addressable, addressable memory, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if, I, if I'm mistaken, you can put it in the comments and you can correct me. Don't care, you know. But anyway, so... Uh, content accessible mem. Oh, there we go. You see, sometimes I don't know what I'm putting on my own uh, slide. So, content addressable memory. And again, that's the same as a MAC address. So, basically, not to make it this too long, and that's a video out there where I teach what's a switch, like in really detail, what's a switch. And I talk about these things, you know, like how those computers connect to the switch. And based on that, it's going to send a broadcast, right? And it's going to basically get the MAC address of that end device. So I have three computers connected to the switch and I'm using port four, five, and six. So once they communicate for the first time and more likely that's going to send a broadcast asking, hey, I just connected to the network. I need, a, uh, I need an IP address. So I'm just going to send a broadcast looking for a DHCP. So at that point, the switch is going to learn, oh, so on port four, I have that device with the following MAC address. Okay. Oh, on port five, I have... Uh, end device with the following MAC address and that's basically what's the store and if I'm not mistaken it's about five minutes what it will retain that information if I'm not mistaken okay now let's move on to number nine so make a smart forwarding decisions based on as you know right MAC addresses so because now I know the devices that are connected to the switch I will be able instead of sending a message you know, to all of the computers when I get a broadcast, and I hope you know what's a broadcast by now, but that's basically saying, hey, you know, like, I, let's say that I have 20 students, you know, in front of me, and I don't know your names, and let's say that you're David, but I don't know that you're David, so, but I have 20 students, I'm like, David, who is David? You know, your mom is calling you. I'm like, uh, that's me. Okay, so now I know you're sitting, like, in front, Third, uh, I'm front and the second or whatever. I know where you are right now. So next time someone comes to me and say, hey, I need to talk to David or David has a phone call. I'm like, hey, David, like someone is calling you. I'm not going to like broadcast Ooh, who's David. So it's the same, you know, with switches. You know, once the switches learn the MAC addresses and where those end devices are located and what port, you know, that switch will be able to forward that message. Um, uh, uh, it's smart, like being smart about it, okay? Forwarding that is uh, uh, based on that on the Mac. So let's move on. 10. So we have ports, and that's basically it's 100, 1,000. That means 1 gigabit, gigabit per second and 10 gigabits per second. Now, that's not based on the ports that we have the and the 24 or 48 port. That's based on the, we have sometimes two, sometimes we have four all the way on the, me, that will be all the way on the right side, okay? And that's when we, uh, we, we, we can set up some um, SFPs, a small form uh, plugins or portables, I think. You know, it's, it's too much info. But let me show you, okay? So like, like right here, right? So all of this, if I see, if, yeah. So all of these, there are 100 megabits per second. You know that connection. So we have four here. Now these four did something for us to plug in. And I don't think I have one right now with me. Uh, but that's something that you can plug in. That's called a small uh, SFP, a small form pluggable, I think it is. You know, and that's depending what type of connection are you going to use. And that can be a fiber optic connection. Okay. Um, and that's again based on the speed. And you can go up to one gigabit or up to 10 gigabits. Okay, so that's basically what that is. And I don't know why did I show you the router when I have it right here. You see, we have one, two, three, four. 
Uh, we have this is for uplink. This is for a console. We have the console through RJ45 connection and rollover cable, console cable, or we have the mini USB, you know, for us to plug into the switch. But we have one, two, three, four uh, that we can connect that. Uh, oh my God. A fiber optic connection. We have 10 more to go, 11, I guess. So auto MDIX, media independent interface crossover. Again, right, if you're gonna connect a, a switch to a switch, what's gonna happen, right? You need to have a crossover cable. Now, if you don't have one, because most people don't, right, you can connect a straight to cable. And guess what? All of the switches out there right now, they have that technology or that feature or however you wanna call it the MDIX, what that means is gonna detect it, it's gonna switch the pins, and boom, you have that crossover cable, okay? So that's exactly what that is. So that's something else for you to think about switching, okay? Uh, 12 forward broadcast messages, okay? So forward broadcast, me broadcast messages. That's something that you probably know that routers don't do. Routers don't do that, switches do, right? So I sent a broadcast and that switch is gonna be, well, I don't have it, in my cam table and my MAC address table. So guess what? I'm just gonna bam, you know, put it out there, okay? To see who's gonna reply to that broadcast. So it's gonna forward that. Um, so let's see, 12 frames. So, and you have, I have the same uh, number. Anyway, so frames, okay? Frames, frames. Switches, it's all about frames. Now, if I take that frame, I'm gonna find what inside of it? the source and destination MAC address, right? And obviously that's another thing that we're gonna add to that and that's basically the CRC or F F C S, okay? But that's for another video, you know, we're just gonna wanna go through this really quick. So the next one, uh, VLAN. So this is probably one thing that crossed your mind, you know, VLANs, and that's a video, by the way, they talk about VLANs in really detail, and this is something that you should know by now, right? So you have one switch, you have one network, uh, now you can have three, four, five networks really up to you, but that means that you have to create three, four, five VLANs. Now for those computers from different VLANs to be able, different networks, different segments, okay, for, um, for them to be able to communicate with each other, if you have a layer three switch like the one that I show you, you can do inner VLAN switching. Right, no need for a router because those layer three switches are switches and routers. Now, the other thing that a lot of people don't know or forget or whatever is that when you have a layer three switch out of the box, it works, but it's just a switch. A layer three switch out of the box, it's just a switch. You know, the way that you can also make it a router is when you type what command. So you're going through the job interview process and I ask you, what's the command? What's the command? So you can make that layer three switch a router as well. IP routing, right? If you don't do the IP routing, you just have a switch in front of you. Okay, so obviously you need to do IP routing and then you can do inner VLAN routing for you to, for that computers connected and that physical switch to be able to communicate with one another. And that's if you want to make that happen. Now, if that's a, just a layer two switch, what you need to do is for you to add a router so you can do router on the stick. And then that's trunking and a few other things that I'm gonna teach in other videos. I don't have, you see, it's many information going through my mind. But you see, that's how you need to talk to people. You know, when they ask you something about VLANs, it's not like, oh, yeah, it's a virtual local area network and switches. And yes, you know, you divide networks and yeah, like, no, what else can you say about it? You know, talk for, uh, about, about that for five minutes. You know, when they ask you something, talk about it for five minutes, 10 minutes. You can find many other things related to that topic. That way they can see you, that you are badass, that you are an expert because now you are teaching. You're not only answering their question. Whew, okay, 14, trunking. So that's the other thing that I mentioned, right? So switching, trunking, more likely if you have switches, if you work in any company, you know, they all, I mean, all companies have VLANs. So what that means, switching equals VLANs. VLANs equals trunking. Trunking equals switching and switching equals VLANs. Yes, <laughs> so funny. Anyway, so let's move on. So port security. So that's another thing that you 
think about. And yes, once you go through your CCNA and routing and switching, that's something that you'll learn really well. And that's something that I can teach you through the membership site, or that's something if you want me to help you have that interaction with me, you know, I can help you through that coaching program. So you can accelerate the process for you to get a badass job in the IT field. And I believe for you to completely differentiate yourself from everyone else, because that's exactly what we are here for to help you to do that. So 16 ether channel. So now what's ether channel? Now, if you knew about switching and tell me, explain that to me, what's ether channel and when will you use ether channel? Tell me, right? So ether channel, that's basically getting like two, four, let's say six physical connections between switches, right? Switches to switches and bundle those, let's say four physical connections in one virtual connection. Whew. Okay, and you have to uh, assign those based on a, a group, uh, a channel group, okay? Again, that's something that you will know how to do on your CCNA. But yeah, it's another thing for you to think about, you know, Ether channel, you know, let me go back. Okay, every company that I work for, when I was a network engineer, a network admin, every company, and I've been in the IT for about 12 years, and every company that I work for, and I've been to many companies, they have VLANs, trunking, they have port security, and they have ether channel. And they have, I don't know if I have this in one of the slides, but about the stacking, you know what I just showed you? So if you wanna get a job as a network admin, or you wanna go all the way to network engineer, you have to know those topics really well because every company that I have worked for and people that I talk to, those are like main skills that you must, it's not like you maybe, no, you must have. And not only for you to, configure that because more likely, let me tell you one thing that probably people don't tell you, that most of the time it's not you configuring something. Most of the time it's you fixing something. It's you finding what's the issue, okay? So that's the way that you need to approach when you learn something. Most, most people don't do that. They just go through autopilot and learning and also in their IT career. Don't be one of them. So 617, so a spanning tree protocol. Again, that's another thing that you better know. That's not something that you configure because as you know, right? You take the switch out of the box, it works. And by the way, it already has STP enabled. You know, but once you plug it in with other switches, you may have some issues that you need to fix or you, need, you, you have to see how you know, a spanning tree protocol or rapid spanning tree protocol, it's configured between those three, four, five switches. Because maybe that's a better design way for you to do that. And that's where you come in as an expert for you to be able to like, you know, this is how they're configured, everything it seems fine, but I found a better way on how to do that. So we can probably do a downtime, you know, or the next time we do a downtime that I can do that and that probably take me like 10, 15 minutes and it will be so much better because if this happened or that happened, blah, 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 blah. You see, that's exactly what's gonna allow you for you to get a promotion, for you to get a badass job and people see you like as an expert, okay? So the other one that I think about, it's power over ethernet. So what that means, you plug in the phone and voila, the phone it's on because it gets the power out of the switch. Now, not all of the switches have that. Let me go back. Most of the Cisco switches and other vendors have that already because right now everything is voice over IP. You know, the wireless access points, the same. You know, you don't connect them to the, to the electricity, to the wall. You know, you just grab the network cable and then you run it and back on the switch and boom, the, the wireless access point turns on. Not all switches have that, but most of them do. That feature, and if I'm not mistaken, let me show you here, because I know this one has. So right there, it says 48 ports. And that's basically uh, PoE, power over ethernet. So this one's right here, that's basically what that is. So I connect this switch basically, and then I plug in some of the computers, uh, I mean some uh, phones, and they're gonna be turned on. And then that computer, I will plug it into the phone. And then I have to do two VLANs within the port and a few other things. You see, probably you didn't know that. All companies, not all of them, but most of them do that. Okay, so again, uh, power over ethernet. Two more, ether channel, I think that's something that I already told you. You see, even though like I go through it, okay. So that's something that I told you, 20 uh, can be fixed or modular. 
Can be fixed or modular? Will you be able to answer that question? Can be fixed or can be modular? What does that mean? Like really, what does that mean? Can be fixed or modular? So when you have the 4500 or the um, 6500, you can add modules. I can add a module of 2448 more ports instead of buying another switch, okay? So that's exactly what that is. Like this one right here, it's just fixed. That's no way that I can add more ports. Like that's no way that I can add more ports. It's fixed. I buy it, that's what I get, done. But if I get a 45, 6500, then I'm gonna get a modular switch. And that's something that I can add, okay? And add more depending on if my company is gonna grow, I don't have the budget, but maybe in the next two years, you know, we're gonna go from, I don't know, 100 users to 300, I don't know. So again, you know, that's when someone needs to come in and ask you a lot of questions and based on that, they will give you a few options based on your budget as well, okay? And designing your network. So the last one, console port. Yes, you know, like obviously it switches, you need to think about that, you know, the console port for you to be able to remote in and be able to connect that. Now, if I ask you this question, how would you be able to do that? Obviously, at first, when you take the switch out of the box, you have to physically go to the switch and connect your computer with using the console cable. But at that point, what options do you have for you to be able to do that remotely? What would you answer me? What would you answer me? And that's Telnet and SSH. SSH. Now, if you were able to answer me that, you probably will be able to answer me. So what's the difference between using Telnet and SSH? What's the difference? Well, Jorge, come on, you know, Telnet, not secure. So all that information that you're gonna send to, you can grab Wireshark and you will see that information that you're sending basically. SSH, it's encrypted. It's encrypted. And by the way, port, what port? What port Telnet and what port SSH? So 22 and 23, right? 22, SSH, 23, Telnet. You see, what else can you say more about? Because I can just probably end the video by saying, yes, you know, switches, console port. You know, you need to connect to the switch, so you need a console port. Done. No, I found another way for me to add more into it. That's exactly how you need to answer questions. So that's it. That's all I have. So make sure you go through the other video when, uh, where I go in really detail about a lot of the topics that I talk about um, here on the switch because I'm doing a video about, okay, what's a switch? And I go and talk about what's a switch. And then I do a video like this one, like 21 things, uh, 15 things. So in this case, 21 things about switches. And that's basically approaching the same topic from different directions. That way you are learning this topic of switchings, switches uh, from two different points of view, attacking the topic two different ways. And that, my friend, will help you a lot for you to really get this. So that's all I have. Make sure you like the video, comment on the video, and follow us. You know, I'm taking the time to do this video, so follow us. You know, send me a message and check out our membership site. Follow us on Instagram. And that's it. That's all I have. Go to the next video. I will see you, talk to you in the next video. So I will see you there.